Chapter 2 Saturday morning came, and all the summer world was bright and fresh and full of life. There was a song in every heart, and if the heart was young, the music came from the lips. There was happiness in every face. The trees were in bloom, and the sweet smells of the blossoms filled the air. Cardiff Hill was covered with green grass, and it seemed a wonderful land, pleasant and inviting. Tom appeared in the street, with a bucket of paint and a long-handled brush. He looked at the fence, and all happiness left him. Deep melancholy settled down in his heart. Thirty yards of a high-board fence. Life to him seemed very hard. Tom sighed, dipped his brush, and passed it along the top of the fence. He repeated the operation, did it again, compared the small piece of painted fence with the great continent of unpainted fence, and sat down on a box, unhappy. Jim, Aunt Polly's small negro boy, came at the gate with a bucket and singing Buffalo Girls. Tom had always hated to bring water from the town pump before, but at the moment that job looked not that bad to him. He remembered that there was always company at the pump. White and Negro boys and girls were always there waiting for their turns, resting, talking, quarreling, fighting. And he remembered that although the pump was only a 150 yards away, Jim never got back with a bucket of water in less than an hour. And even then, somebody generally had to go after him. Tom said, Say, Jim, I'll fetch the water if you paint some. Jim shook his head and said, I can't, Master Tom. Old Missus told me to go and get this water and not stop fooling around with anybody. She said Master Tom would ask me to paint. So she told me to go along and attend to my own business. She said she would attend to the painting. Oh, never mind what she said, Jim. That's the way she always talks. Give me the bucket. I won't be gone only a minute. She won't ever know. Oh, I can't, Master Tom. Old Missus said she'd tear the head off me. Indeed she would. She, she never hits anybody. Knocks them on the head with her thimble. Who cares for that, I'd like to know. She says awful things, but talk doesn't hurt. Anyway, it doesn't if she doesn't cry, Jim. I'll give you a white marble. Jim began to hesitate. White marble, Jim, and it's a good thing. Of course, that's a real thing, I tell you. But Master Tom, I'm afraid of old missus. And besides, I'll show you my sore toe. Jim was only human. This attraction was too much for him. He put down his bucket, took the white marble, and bent over the toe with great interest. In another moment, he was flying down the street with his bucket. Tom was energetically painting, and Aunt Polly was leaving the field with a shoe in her hand and triumph in her eyes. But Tom's energy did not last. He began to think of the fun he had planned for this day. Soon, the free boys would take all sorts of wonderful expeditions, and they would make fun of him for having to work. The very thought of it burnt him like fire. He got out what he had in his pockets, bits of toys, marbles, and trash. Not enough to buy even half an hour of real freedom. So he returned his things to his pocket, and gave up the idea of trying to buy the boys. At this dark and hopeless moment, an inspiration burst upon him. Nothing less than a great, wonderful inspiration. He took up his brush and went to work. Ben Rogers appeared. Tom was sure that he would be the first, of all the boys, to laugh at him. Ben was eating an apple and giving a long, low sound at intervals, followed by a ding-dong-dong, ding-dong-dong. He was imitating a steamboat. 
When Ben came up to Tom, he took the middle of the street and then slowly moved to the fence. Ben was imitating the big Missouri. He was boat and captain at the same time, so he had to imagine that he was standing on his own deck, giving the orders and executing them. Stop the ship, sir. Ding a ling ling. The ship moved slowly in Tom's direction. Tom went on painting. He paid no attention to the steamboat. Ben looked at him for a moment and then said, Hello, you. No answer. Tom examined his work with the eye of an artist and went on painting. Ben said, Hello, Tom. You've got to work, huh? Tom turned to him suddenly and said, Why, it's you, Ben. I didn't notice you. I say, I'm going swimming. Would you like to come, too? But, of course, you'd rather work today, wouldn't you? Of course you would. Tom looked at the boy and said, What do you call work? Why, isn't that work? Tom answered carelessly, Well, perhaps it is, and perhaps it isn't. All I know is that Tom Sawyer likes it. Oh, come now, you don't mean to say that you like it. The brush continued to move. Like it? Well, I don't see why I shouldn't like it. Does a boy get a chance to paint a fence every day? That put the thing in a new light. Ben stopped eating his apple. Tom stepped back to see the results, added a touch here and there, and looked at his work critically again. Ben was watching every move and getting more and more interested. At last he said, Say, Tom, let me paint a little. Tom thought a little and said, No, no, I can't do it, Ben. You see, Aunt Polly asked me specifically to paint this fence, right here on this street, you know. It must be done very carefully. I believe there isn't one boy in a thousand, maybe two thousand that can do it the way it must be done. No, is that so? Oh, come now, let me just try. Only just a little. I'd let you, Tom. Ben, I'd like to, honestly. But Aunt Polly, well, Jim wanted to do it, but she didn't let him. My brother Sid wanted to do it, and she didn't let Sid. If anything happens to this fence, oh, Tom, I'll be just as careful. Now let me try. Say, I'll give you my apple. Tom stopped, looked at Ben, and slowly gave him the brush. And when the ex-steamboat Big Missouri worked in the sun, the artist sat near the fence under the tree, ate his apple, and planned to attract more victims. There were a lot of them. Boys came to make fun of him, but remained to paint the fence. When Ben got tired... Tom let Billy Fisher paint in exchange for a kite. Then, Johnny Miller sold his dead rat for half an hour of work, and so on and so on, hour after hour. And when the middle of the afternoon came, the fence had three coats of paint on it, and Tom was richer than ever before. Apart from the kite and the rat, he got twelve marbles, a piece of chalk, a tin soldier, a piece of blue bottle glass, a key that wouldn't unlock anything, six firecrackers, a kitten with only one eye, a brass doorknob, a dog collar, but no dog, the handle of a knife, four pieces of orange peel, and lots of other boy treasures. Tom had had a good time. In the afternoon, Tom said to himself, that life was not so hard after all. He had discovered a great law of human action without knowing it, that in order to make a man or a boy want a thing, it is only necessary to make this thing hard to get. <laughs>